Hey! Yeah, there, that was a good one. Hey. Welcome to episode 22. Uh, I had to look again and go, was it 22? Oh, wow. Uh, that's rad. It's been 22 episodes of Alex and Jim Analyze Billy Joel Lyrics. Again, too big a word. What? I think it's too much to say that we're anal. I mean, we do analyze them, but it's yeah. hardly, it's hardly that they need a whole lot of analysis. Yeah. Alex and Jim read Billy Joel they lyrics. Just, Alex and Jim tell old stories and then once in a while get back to the song. <laughs> That's a good title as well. Yeah. Um, um, accuracy in podcasting. It's very important. Yeah. Uh, Alex and Jim, despite some appearances, really do like Billy Joel. It's true. I know. Sometimes... Because you don't have to like him all the time. No. And that makes him easier to like. True. Because we and... both write a lot, you and I, for our yeah. various jobs. And you know that uh, when you're a writer and you write stuff, 90% of what you write is poop. Yeah. <laughs> and then you... But you don't throw away all of the poop. Yeah. You some of it you're just like, well, I'm tired of writing, so I'm gonna use some of the crap and all the good stuff. Absolutely. And I feel like he, he did that too. Yeah. I I've had this experience of going back and looking at something I thought of mine that I thought was great. And mm -hmm. so many times I reconclude that I was mistaken. Yeah. And I'm delighted when I go back and look at something, let's say, very old of mine and go, no, that was great. Do you feel like that pool gets smaller <laughs> as you get older? That's how I feel. I used to think like half the jokes I wrote were great. And now I've been doing this for 17 years for the TV. And I there are like five jokes that I think about and go, ah, yes, I did good there. <laughs> the rest I'm like, Fine, the check's cleared. Yeah. So five jokes where I'm like, those were my career. <laughs> those yeah. five jokes. Um, yeah, for sure. It's a little different in stand-up because I'm sure. constantly writing jokes for myself and I'm constantly being corrected by the audience in real time. Right. And you're keeping and you're doing it. You might do the same joke for years. Yes, indeed. With uh, sure. refurbishments. Whereas yeah. I would write it, it gets said, and then off I go. Yeah, I think about that for that gig. And one thing, like, I used to write some topical material for my act. And I still do now and then, but only from absolute inspiration. Only because I'm mad about something and I got to talk about it. Like, I have a big, solid 15-minute chunk ridiculing libertarians. Right. Well, they'll be around, so <laughs> you can hang on to that. And they'll always be annoying. They yes. just will. They'll never be a real party. But then all those uh, Spiro Agnew jokes you had. Yeah. What are you going to do with those now? Glorious jokes, <laughs> but still. That's your best work, but <laughs> they're trapped in amber now. That's right. So then I, so with you too, because you write those, the bummer of it for me would be, but it's just a different discipline, obvious. Obviously, it's different. Yeah, totally. because you never get to go back and go, okay, this was a good joke, but if I did this and I massaged it this way, it becomes a great joke. There's no time for that. There really isn't, um, and no need, really. But there yeah. is a, a thing I have done where uh, I'll be like, oh, this punchline I had 11 years ago works again with this other setup right uh, nobody's looking i'll throw it in again <laughs> i've never been called out on it that's great that's fantastic. Great. i'm like there's too much tv nobody nobody can keep track of all the tv oh yeah sure I'm... back with rabbit ears maybe you could well yeah and you live with the truth that any joke you come up with there you're going to be as original as you can and you're going right. to be as creative as you can and somebody's dad made a similar joke or something yeah, yeah. though uh i don't know if i've ever told you this example i uh, we had an earthquake here and it was a, and it measured a seven on the richter scale and my joke i tweeted out was 
in the Midwest, it had been a 10. Great. Great joke. Yeah. And then I was like, I should look that up, but I'd already tweeted it. And somebody who wrote for like the good place or something had tweeted a very similar joke an hour before me. Ah. And I was like, damn it. And then my friend, Jim Coughlin, who's a one-liner comic, funny dude, had made a similar joke seven years earlier. <laughs> <laughs> it's inevitable. If a joke is any good, yeah. somebody else will have found it. And that's fine. What's terrible is when dumb people who don't know what jokes are then say, you stole this from this person. Oh, I have a whole bit of- That was the only way that could happen is yeah. if you stole it. Yeah. I have a whole bit about that because, so it's actually, it's called parallel thinking, right? That's what it's called. Yep. And sometimes the joke will be so close that other people will accuse you of stealing. So you're a joke thief. And then I was speculating- I bet that happens sometimes when you read a suicide note. I'll bet you're right. Well, you look at the note and you go, well, I was sad at first. Now I'm just disappointed. Yeah, joke there. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so alone. Oh. And Dave did that 11 years ago. You feel so alone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, what's this podcast about this podcast <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're gonna, i'll tell you a quick story about the title title of the story the song we're going to talk about is no man's land and alex picked it last week and i wrote it down to remember what we were going to talk about uh-huh and uh, so and i listened to the song and when i got back here before we recorded i thought where did i write that down and for some reason, because I couldn't remember where I wrote it down, I got addled and upset. And I had to figure out where I had written down the title, even though I didn't need it anymore. You knew the title. It became important to know, I want to remember where I wrote it down. Yeah, I know how that goes. That can't possibly be important. <laughs> I have done similar things where I'm like, oh, fuck, where are my keys? Oh, here they are. Now I'm still upset because why did I put them there? <laughs> and then I, I have the keys, but I'm obsessed with like, why did I put them there? Why on that surface? Was I walking to that place to do this thing? And you're like, this is not the point. You have what you need. Yeah, you can stop being worried now. Yeah, we're you just have, addicted. You have your keys. We're addicted to being worried and upset. <laughs> yep. And I found it and it made me feel better. I was like, ah. Oh. That's where I wrote it down. It turned out it was on a piece of paper the whole time. What a great mystery. Oh, my God. Uh, so Another no man, great show. Huh? What? Another great show. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> No Man's Land. I'll just start off with something that happens at the ending. I want to start out with that. And then I'll mention the beginning. And then we'll talk about the lyrics. All right. At the very end, it does a fade out. And as we've talked about, I don't always often like a fade out in a song. I like a deliberate ending. And I think I would have liked a deliberate ending here, but something funny happens in the end. In the very tail end, he does a real screamy rock and roll thing. <laughs> yes. But why are you fading out on that? It's the only time he does it in the song that he does it so extreme. And part of me is like, did his voice crack so bad that they went, we better just fade this fucker out? I don't know. Hmm. But did you notice I, that? Yes. Uh, and it is very funny. And I've noticed that happens in a lot of fade out songs. They're doing like different versions of the same line or they'll do a crazy scream or a hey mama, hey mama <laughs> or something <laughs> just because in the studio, obviously they're not fading out. They're yeah. just playing the same thing over and over again. They're like, just play the same thing for like two minutes and then we'll fade it out in the recording. So they have to fucking figure out how to make it interesting for themselves while they're singing the same three lines or the same refrain over and over again. That's um, funny. I think it's funny. I think they're just like, there's somebody in the booth who's doing this, like, keep going, just keep going, <laughs> keep going, just keep going. And they're like, I fucking, I already said it. I don't know. Ah! 
Um, it's very funny to listen. Uh, Billy Joel does it, does funny things with his fade outs when he has them. Hall and Oates is very funny to listen to. They have a lot of radio fade outs that are super long. And, you know, Daryl Hall has a great magical soul voice and he can do curly cues and all kinds of things. Uh, and they're very nerdy. Um, so he'll like, they'll have like dialogue <laughs> where they're talking. He and Oates are yeah. chatting back and forth over the music as it's fading out. And they're always so funny to listen to. Yeah. If you, uh, no one's ever been this bored, but if you're that bored, check out some good Hall & Oates fade outs. <laughs> Hall & Oates is great. Um, and it's yeah. funny, I, for a while, had decided they weren't. And I don't know what bothered me about them. And then I realized I was wrong. Yeah. And that's There's definitely some things you could choose from if you want to be bothered. Yeah. But they're and, great. Yeah. There's just nothing wrong with them. I find there was a lot of stuff in my youth I was just mad about. What the fuck am I mad about? <laughs> um, no Man's Land, the beginning. He does a vocal trick. I don't know how often I've heard it from Billy Joel specifically. You know, a lot of times an artist will reach to the top of their register. This, at the beginning of this, it feels like he's like going right at the bottom of his register. Yeah. And it's, it's a, a very different sound. It is. And it, it's, it doesn't feel forced or fake or anything. It feels like it works for the song. I was my initial reaction in thinking about it when I'm putting it on to for our show and I'm thinking about it in the context of our show is I'm like, oh, maybe he's being ridiculous. I'm like, no, I don't think he is. I think this is good. <laughs> yeah, I think he's going for a vibe. Um, yeah, when I first listened, I listened to it again. And of course, in the context of our conversations, my thought was, oh, who's he trying to sound like? Yeah. <laughs> like this. Is he going for like a Morrissey thing or what is this supposed to be? Uh, and then I was like, oh, I think it's just a choice that he made to sound sinister. Yep. There's a lot of us sinister stuff going on in the song. I'm looking at my cat who's about to slide off the couch head first. It's very funny. <laughs> uh, more on that as it develops. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I think he's just going for a mood thing and it really works. I think so too. And I was happy to realize that, no, 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 this is good. I like this. I don't need to be a jerk about this. This is fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which Enjoy yourself. Weird because the one thing about it is much like episode one of our, of our Alex and Jim Analyze Billy Joel, he doesn't come back to this Billy Joel trick in the whole song. I don't think so. No, just the beginnings of verses, I think. Yeah, but That's never what... quite as much as what he pops in. Yeah, he comes in real low. And uh, let, we'll get into the lyrics in a second and you, you go ahead and start, but I just want to ask this question. Is there any Billy Joel song that features a significant drum solo? Solo? There's certainly a lot of, I mean, Goodnight Saigon has a lot of drum work. I, mean, yeah. I don't think it's a thing that amounts to a solo. Because his drummer, Liberty DeVito, childhood friend, uh, I think is not regarded as one of the greats. Okay. <laughs> like he's a perfectly fine drummer, but I don't think you'd want to put a spotlight on him. Okay. That's my guess. That's, that's interesting. Because I, in listening to this, there's a lot of drum. The drum uh, makes a significant appearance in this song. Uh, not a lot of piano which is fine. Sometimes, right. Like we both said, we kind of prefer to hear some piano from our piano man, but it's fine. Um, but the drum, but there's no drum solo. And in a dog on me, I'm like, I don't think there is one like just classic, hey, let's, let's give it up for my drummer. And there's nothing like that. <laughs> no. In concert, there's some of that. Um, but they never play alone, even... Uh, you know, a lot of rock stars will be like, oh, and on the bass guitar, so-and-so, and the guy will do a bunch of bass stuff. When he does it, they just keep playing the song that they're playing. <laughs> and the guy will like step forward and maybe do a little noodle, but it's never like full solo. Like they only work together. Yeah. It sounds like. That's funny. I think 
honestly, and I'm not don't mean this in any insulting way, but I've seen I've seen Weird Al live. Yeah, same. And I think his band is better than Billy Joel's band. <laughs> he has a pretty hot band. I think you have to. Yep. The the very stupid band, I think, is what they're called. I think that's what they're named, right? <laughs> that seems right. <laughs> yeah. Um, not quite a joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not quite a joke, but still fun and dumb. Yeah. So that popped into my head. And then with that, let us finally hear some lyrics. All right. It's 25 minutes in and we're starting. <laughs> I've seen those big machines come rolling through the quiet pines. Blue suits and bankers with their Volvos and their Valentines. Really like this lyric. Yeah. I think this can go in a lot of places. It's uh, It's got the sinister vibe that the, you know, this song makes me think of uh, Down Easter Alexa because the theme is very similar. Yeah. It's Long Island is being taken over by developers who are not as interesting as the original inhabitants. Yep. Um, this is less about the boats and more about the actual island. Yeah. Seen those big machines come rolling through. Like this could be in a punk lyric. Yeah, for sure. It's, a lot of the thematics in this song are very punk. It's sort of like a uh, big business is coming in to fuck everything up. Yeah, I, I felt very much like this would have been at home on glass houses. Yes. That's yeah. the vibe I got for sure. And, and I do like the just, this is something I, this is something I could legitimately see Billy Joel being pissed off about and having a point. Yeah. And I think I liked this song because it's on, uh, what the hell is the album called? Uh, River of Dreams. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I had to listen to that fucking Uga Chaka song. Uh, and then this came up and I was like, oh, good. He's still got it. He's still pissy. Yeah. Uh, and anti-corporate in a fun way. And it's not overproduced like some of the, well, like River of Dreams, for example, is there's a lot of production. Yeah, it's pretty bare. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this next part I love. Give us this day our daily discount outlet merchandise. <laughs> Raise up a multiplex and we will make a sacrifice. That is straight up collegiate punk rock lyrics. For sure. Um, it's, you know, it's got religious overtones. <laughs> Give us this day, raise up a multiplex. We yeah. will make a sacrifice. And I like taking, give us this day our daily bread, discount outlet merchandise substitutes for bread. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Kind of wonderful, yeah. Not specific, all like business keywords. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's very, very... I, it's not really very good poetry, but it's very good poetry sounding punk lyrics. It's, it's yeah, it's not very good. A poetry. great old Smiths song or like a Cure song from the mid 80s. Or a yelling guy at a poetry slam. Yes. He's yelling or, and he's gesticulating and tricking, yeah. tricking you into thinking he has more to say. <laughs> Right, this would get you a solid B in like college poetry class. Yeah. Um, did it dawn on you too? It always dawns on me when stuff like this pops up because I think this was like around the early 90s. And uh, I'm like, yeah, and all of the stuff he's talking about, uh, they're gone too now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's been a whole other wave since then. Yeah, the multiplex is given way to um and, Tesla, and, uh, charging stations and fucking yeah. we works <laughs> in some cases a la the talking head song it's given way to trees again because <laughs> yeah yeah oh talking heads is a very good analogy too yeah oh uh, love, love me some talking heads the best talking heads was one of those groups that when i was younger i enjoyed and i think even then i was like i think i'll enjoy this better when i'm a little smarter <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice feeling, isn't it? Yeah. Like, oh, good, I'll grow into this music. 
I think I'll come around to it. Whereas like, it was like with David Bowie, I was like, oh, I like David. I really can respect him. I don't think I'm ever going to be quite enough for this stuff. Yeah, I would almost say this could be Bowie if it was a little cleaner. Yeah. <laughs> this is still a little too amateur. Yeah, absolutely. This, the next part really makes me laugh because he's done some nice punk rock college poetry. And then it becomes, now we're going to get the big business. Now we're going to get the real thing. Everybody's all excited about it. Is such a weird phrase. Everybody's all excited is a teenage phrasing. Yeah. Are you all excited about it? <laughs> um, it's just such a, a, it's not this, it doesn't match. No, it doesn't. It's super, it's super conversational. Oh, you know, they, we were, oh, we were all excited about it. We got all, yeah, it's that. It's just, we're chatting over lunch yeah how, how they just open a big lots and we're just excited about it it just i think it was like you needed one more syllable yeah you couldn't say everybody's excited about it everybody's yeah. very excited about it too many syllables all yeah. oh. plug that in and you know what would have been good so for real everybody's Everybody. excited about it yeah excited about with it. yeah and you can even do it in an Italian accent. <laughs> I watched the video of him doing this song and uh, during that line, he, he does this. Everybody's all excited about it. Hold he on. does the hands. <laughs> he does the all excited about it hands. So I'm like, what are you going for, <laughs> man? Um, but it is great. And I really like Volvos and Valentines. Yeah. What are the Valentines? Is it I think it's uh, the corporations coming in and going, hey, Long Island, we love you. Here's what we're going to do for you. Like they're overtures to oh. the people of Long Island. Okay. Um, we're going to tear down all your nice shit, but we're going to do nice things for you. You're going to get a Carl's Jr. <laughs> or whatever they have, a golf outlet store. I, uh, I worked for a company in Chicago that made your old dingy bathroom look shiny and new. Oh, great. That was Sue. Hello, Sue. Um, and what, the way they would do it is they would put this um, plastic stuff, uh, cover everything in this plastic stuff that they called something else, but it was plastic. <laughs> and I remember one day hauling a clawfoot tub down the stairs of a nice building and it didn't dawn on me until i got to the bottom i went wait a minute they just tore out an old clawfoot tub which if you've ever first if you've ever bathed in one they're amazing if you've ever had one in a home they look incredible even when they look terrible they look incredible yeah people are killing each other to get a clawfoot tub around here yeah they got the, the feet are cool. Oftentimes there's just um, ornate, but not over the top design things. And yep. we went in and corrected that for you. I drove her away. <laughs> cry <laughs> about a clawfoot tub that will never be again. And that's what this reminded me of this lyric. It's you're awfully damn right. We're going to put up all this cool stuff. Oh yeah. I know you had trees. Those must've been nice. Right. Yes. You had trees and cool fishing trawlers and crops yeah <laughs> like there's a lot of farmland out there yeah ways to make a living that we're eliminating but you will be a walmart greeter yep and man look at how many movies you can see at one place in a not good environment <laughs> yay and get bed bugs yeah <laughs> that was a thing out here i don't know if that happened there but um for a while there was a huge bed bug explosion in this town uh, and uh, it was the multiplexes was where everybody was getting them. Oh, yeah, that sucks. It sucks hard. Yeah, so nobody went to the movies for a year. Yeah, um, you want to take this, uh, <laughs> the chorus? Sure, who remembers when it all began? 
out here in no man's land. Uh, before they pass the master plan out here in no man's land. Um, I like before they pass the master plan. That's good and sinister. Yeah. And it has a lot of A sounds. Yeah. Yep. And it also has a, I, it has a, to me, it had a like uh, echoes of, you know, Mm. Nazis and Holocaust and I don't know if that's intentional but to just it and it doesn't feel overdone but it feels like you're saying it feels like we're saying this is that kind of sinister yeah that just a little shiver passes over you yeah and uh but it also doesn't see seem so on the nose that it would offend you like when people right. go this is like the Holocaust and you're like no it's not <laughs> you're like no no uh, it feels like it hits it in a nice sweet spot or where you're evoking uh, yeah. the um, um, immense cruelty men, men can do in the name of their power and their money. Right. Um, and which certainly, certainly seems continually germane no matter what era you're talking about. Germane. Uh, One letter away from German. Oh, yeah. I bet that's <laughs> <laughs> low supply and high demand out here in no man's land low supply and high demand uh great uh which i think you know from a business perspective was what was attractive about long island to these developers it was like they don't have any stores there's millions of people living out there it's very inconvenient you have to go to like we'll put them Everybody wants to buy shit and they don't have anywhere to go. This is great. Yeah. We're coming in. And I'm sure it worked like gangbusters. <laughs> so Oh yeah. I mean, if you if you drive out on Long Island now, you see the fruits of their labors. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of it is fucking hideous. Yeah. And a lot of it was at the sacrifice of land and jobs and, and Billy Joel ain't wrong. He's not wrong but, about this. He's not wrong about this. You guys, he's speaking from experience. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. There's somebody else saw this, some of the lyric. Is it REM a little bit? Uh, it's a little bit uh, old police. Yeah. <laughs> that kind of like uh, anti corporate rage. Yeah. Which I'm always happy to see because, you know, <clears throat> if you go out on Long Island now, it's very Republican. Uh, and I think it always was. Um, so it's interesting, a guy who grew up there has these, you know, what amount to liberal viewpoints Yeah. Uh, towards corporate power, at least. Yeah, my uh, a buddy of mine, he's a comic. He, uh, he's, he said he's the first Democrat in his family. The first. Yeah, I'll and bet. He says because, he said because where... I come from, you can be arrested for empathy. <laughs> <laughs> that seems right. I used to, uh, we used to play golf out there and we would drive by this one house every time that had a huge Trump flag, like on a flagpole in the front yard. And we hadn't been out there in a couple of years. We went out there last weekend and we're like, oh, I wonder if the Trump guy will still have his giant flag out. Uh, and he didn't. And I was like, aha, things are changing. And we pulled into the parking lot, and the first thing I saw was an enormous bumper sticker that said, Biden Harris, they cheated. And I was like, oh, well, uh, it doesn't change. Yeah, you know what, though? The good thing is, I say that kind of stuff and isolate yourself even more. That's good. That's yeah, by all means, announce your presence. Because the virus taking some of you dummies out, and then just more people behind you not you're not appealing to anyone new so yeah it's not nature, a strong argument yeah nature's not to live her with. oh she's back hey welcome back sue we want her back <laughs> by finally talking about the lyrics <laughs> <laughs> oh she went and she worked an eight-hour shift just now oh my goodness okay so i know we've been going for a long time yeah <laughs> um shall i yes please there ain't much work out here in our consumer power base. No major industry, just miles and miles of parking space. Great. Yep. 
now we now we're going to set the song in a, a moment in time. This morning's paper says our neighbors in a cocaine bust. Lots more to read about Lolita and suburban lust. Those are interesting details, and I'm like, I I. I'm fine with cocaine being in the song. It's weird that it makes an appearance at all. I don't yeah. know. It's weird that it's the, the neighbors. I mean, there was a, I mean, there's a series of huge cocaine busts out there. Okay. So it's about something specific. And right. Then, and then you amp it up because right after cocaine bust is this Lolita nonsense. Lolita. Long. Do you remember the Long Island Lolita? Oh yeah, that's right. What's her name? Why can't I think of her real name? Amy, it was the Joey Buttafuoco. Yeah. And uh, Amy, what's her name? Anyway. Amy uh, Klobuchar, I think is the name. It was Amy Klobuchar. That's right. She really made a comeback. Uh, <laughs> but that's, why, that's why she sounds so nervous all the time. That's right. You, by the way, you could almost see the ner desperation in my voice. I'm like, what's the right funny Amy? And Klobuchar. <laughs> you nailed it. Because I was good. Amy Schumer, that ain't funny. Klobuchar. Yeah. That's the one. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I so, do remember that thing. She was she was the Long Island Madam, right? No, she was the Long Island Lolita. Okay, but she didn't also sell other folks. She just was herself. No, she was just uh, Joey Buttafuoco owned like a garage or something, That's and the teenage girl would come and hang around, and it turned out they were fucking. Yeah. And then she, the teenage girl, showed up to the Joey Buttafuoco's house and shot his wife in the face. In the face. That's right. Oh, okay. And now it's coming. Back. She survived that, I think. She did. Yeah. Uh, and then it was a whole thing for a very long time. It was the only thing in the newspaper for a year and a half. By uh, the way, if you want to know just how ridiculously um, sexist our dumb culture is, it's fine to make fun of the Long Island Lolita. It's fine to make fun of Joey Buttafuoco. The amount of people actively who made fun of the lady who got shot in the face. Right, who did nothing wrong. Yes. Yeah. That seems so not cool, I'll say. <laughs> yeah, times have changed. Yeah. Also, this was a time where one person got shot and they talked about it for six months. Yeah. And we we're having multiple shootings a day and nobody, I don't know anybody's name. Yeah. Uh, it just keeps moving. I think what you just about bright-sided multiple shootings, <laughs> because at least, at least the one person doesn't get made fun of. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's true. Oh, Lord. Oh. Uh, all right, let's uh, the Long Island Lolita. Okay, so it's in a place and time. I like that. Yeah. Also, mm -hmm. you just morning paper. I don't know anybody who's got a paper. Now we're going to get the whole story. Now we're going to be in prime time. Everybody's all excited about it. <laughs> now we're going to be in prime time. Like, uh, hey, they're finally talking about Long Island. <laughs> no, this, Billy, this is not good. Yeah. Yeah, that, uh, I, I, Take it that that's sarcastic, probably. Now we're in the prime time for this garbage. Right. That's pretty great. I'll do this first so you don't have to do it again. Okay. Who remembers when it all began out here in no man's land? We've just begun to understand out here in no man's land, low supply and high demand here in no man's land. It rhymes. Yeah. It rhymes like hell is we've just begun to understand only because he doesn't want to just repeat it? I don't, yeah, probably yes. Yeah. Um, he doesn't want to repeat master plan. I think the first verse is about uh, corporate takeover and development. Yeah. And this one seems to be about the denigration of morality on oh. Long Island. You know, like we're going through some different themes. So that, so first, that should, yeah. First, the developers come in, make everything shitty. Then uh, there's cocaine and Lolita. Um, everyone's moral standards have plummeted as a result, I guess. Oh yeah. And then, like, it's a uh, it's nicely constructed. 
That's true. It's the unintended consequences because everybody was getting on board with this new thing that was taking away an old thing. Mm -hmm. Then at the end of it, you're like, I remember, remember the old thing where we didn't have ladies getting shot in the face. That was pretty good. Yeah. Remember when uh, you used to go out on your boat and catch fish instead of uh, running kilos <laughs> back and forth to Martha's Vineyard? <laughs> Oh, I mean, Lord, you yeah. can't catch fish anymore. See, see other song. Yeah, right. <laughs> that would be a pretty great lyric. <laughs> like I mentioned in Down Easter Alexa. Uh, somebody needs fit. to do that. <laughs> Tie them all together. Uh, oh. I see these children with their boredom, boredom and their vacant stares. Still very punk rock. Yeah. I love this next lyric. God help us all if we're to blame for their unanswered prayers. Whee. I like that lyric. Very nice. And I feel a lot of like, you know, you're to blame. <laughs> you just <don't laughs> yeah, yeah. You know there's, no, there's no if. Yeah, this was definitely you. They roll the sidewalks up at night. This place goes underground. I'm assuming prime. I'm You're assuming what? Oh, crime. crime. Yeah. So, yeah, everybody goes inside at night because now it's a fucking criminal wasteland. Yep. Thanks to the condo kings, there's cable now in zombie town. Now that, <laughs> could you could drop that line into a B-52 song. Oh, uh, talking heads for sure. Yeah. I love it. Uh, Thanks to the condo kings, there's cable now in zombie town. God bless. What a what a quaint complaint, by the way, cable TV is. Oh yes. And the the kid the children with their boredom and their vacant stares. Yeah. Like uh, this is before uh, everyone had a cell phone, I think. Yep. So I'm like, oh, it gets worse, bud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Now we're gonna get the closed circuit. That is, of course. Man, if that wasn't, if that ain't just an oldy sounding weird complaint, close. <laughs> now we're going to get the top 40. That's an, an old Billy Joel um, thing he don't like is top 40 radio. Top 40, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we're going to get the sports franchise. Now we're going to get the major attractions. And, uh, you know, taken in its totality, I like the uh, continued like, part of the world grasping for other things like one thing i absolutely hate and i and i'm not just as an old man as a young man i noticed it right away is when a sports franchise is like hey you give us a bunch of money to build this stadium and right. it's gonna revitalize downtown and you'll give us all these tax breaks and the politician goes ahead and does it Maybe sometimes they believe it. I think most of the time they don't. Right. Never, never, never does it revive. It revitalizes it in akin to how having the Olympics revitalize the places it's been. Right. Yeah. There's more noise and stuff now. But yeah, yeah no, there's no, it doesn't help small businesses. Man, it jacks up small business too. Because let's say you got the pizza place and you're like, you're going to be so busy during games. Well, are you always having games? No. <laughs> no. Uh, twice a week. Yeah. At weird times, and uh, you won't have enough employees to handle the crush. And also, people will like pee all over the floor in your bathroom, yeah. break the windows. <laughs> and also, there's pizza in the stadium that's better. Yep. And oh, cool. <laughs> Thanks. And the games, yeah. Sometimes maybe you'll sell some extra pizza. You're not going to do it during the concert because that's nope. not what those people do. Those people are just going to be milling outside your place drunk afterwards. So how yeah. about that, you dummy? And your regular customers will be mad because now it takes an hour and a half to get a pizza delivered. Yeah. For 35 minutes. Yeah, it never seems to work. The sports franchise is a bad deal all around. Yeah, anytime it ha doesn't happen nearly often enough, but anytime some mayor or some town says, nope, we're not going to pay for your stadium. And they go, well, we're not going to put it there then. And they go, okay. I'm always like, ah, good for you, town. 
<laughs> yes, our town here has done that a couple of times. They were going to build a sports stadium in Manhattan for the Giants to play in. Yeah. And the, everybody in the city just went, no. And they were like, okay, sorry. Yeah. And then Amazon tried to move its headquarters here. And they're like, we're coming in and you're not going to charge us any taxes. And the whole city went, fuck you. <laughs> Don't come here then. Yeah. Uh, it was great. And the city, you know, we go for a walk in Central Park every weekend. And we're like, this is the best thing a city ever did was just fence off a huge fucking chunk of it and say, nobody's building shit here ever. Yeah. It's just trees and benches and fuck off with your pizza franchise. <laughs> Keep it all outside this. Yeah. And I think New York did that, saw how successful it was, how necessary it is. And uh, now when uh, something tries to encroach, they're like, nah, -uh, no, we have Central Park. We learned this. Yeah. Let's get the fuck out. That is funny how you guys did nail that because that one of is all the cities. Yeah. And that has to be half just luck that it itself is like is just as iconic as a building because you think about it. Yeah. I mean, I could we I could do a podcast about Central Park at this point. <laughs> I've, I've done so much uh, learning about it. It's fascinating. It's the more you learn about it, the more you want to learn about it and how it came to be and how it was designed and built. It's uh, unbelievable. Yeah. God and bless. I'll, I'll still don't go in there after dark. Yeah, no. Yeah. I wouldn't. Yeah. But that's true of my regular park. I yeah. Have a regular size park and it ain't that big and it's still plenty of room to get murdered in. Oh, sure. You don't need a whole lot of room. No, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> that's the thing. It's one of the more uh, um, space efficient activities people engage in. <laughs> it's really true and uh, man are they engaging in it yeah because you always know the the victim isn't going to need much space afterwards so right all you need is an exit route yeah <laughs> a good two-person activity <laughs> you don't need a lot of friends oh, oh well, if that's what this podcast is about right <laughs> this that's is in america to get murdered in we're doing a, a, a murder podcast but we're pro <laughs> most of them are anti i'll tell you what uh and i i know this for a fact if we did a pro murder podcast and need a lot of females to listen to us they love those shows oh yeah they love the murder they love the killing shows my wife i'm like okay well don't, you're not gonna do anything right okay yeah i think they're just looking for tips on murder avoidance right oh That's what i think i was like oh what was she doing when that happened Ah, I won't do that. Yeah. And any number of times where you probably go, I can't even do that? Yeah. <laughs> it's probably, at this point, almost impossible to get a woman to come out on a boat with you. <laughs> so like, ah, I've just seen so many episodes. No. Uh, I, I don't care how ride. light it is out. I'd love to ride your boat. Can we ride it at different times? You will be here. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh. Yeah, all right. I'm going to live stream it the whole time, though. Oh. Uh, uh, who remembers when it all began out here in no man's land before, before the whole world was in our hands out here in no man's land before the banners and the marching bands? I'm not sure what that refers to. Yeah, that feels... Door um, openings and stuff? Yeah, that feels like it's the wrong time that's like, <laughs> like then that's a song about the 50s you know i remember you know, that, that's <laughs> but it, bands. i like the land i like the line before the whole world was in our hands mm -hmm. and it's it feels sad and it feels like there's a good understanding that <clears throat> it shouldn't be yeah it's a it's a nice negative casting of the idea of having the whole world in your hands yeah, absolutely yeah pitched as a good thing yeah like, no, no no it was better before that yeah um if you drive out on long island which i've done now a couple of times from like manhattan to the very end which is montauk yeah you can kind of see like where it's super developed and paved and gross and it just becomes more and more country as you go 
And when you get out to the end, you're like, this is fucking beautiful. Farmland. Yeah. And the seashore and lots of like wilderness and like uh, wildlife preserves and stuff like that. And you're like, oh, if, if a whole island was like this before, uh, it's gorgeous. Yeah. But now, you know, and then you get to the Hamptons and it's a whole other problem. Yeah. Uh, but you can see where like, if you lived there when it was like that, and then here comes all the fucking development, you'd be furious. Yeah, absolutely. Because you and I feel like in this song, what he's mad at mostly is the other Long Islanders who welcomed that. That's what it sounds like to me. Everybody's all excited about it. <laughs> Not me. Because yep. I'm Billy Joel and I only get grumpy about things. <laughs> but he's right. But he's right. He's right. Um, this is one of my favorites. Yeah, it's really nicely put together. It is a great tune, and it's funny that it appears on that album. Yes, it is not an album you care for necessarily. I, uh, yeah, I absolutely. And then, like we, like I said before, the funny fade out. I think you're. I think you hit it, but it, it's so weird. It's just a weird to hear this big Rah! and go. Why'd you make that quiet? That's weird. <laughs> I was like, oh, he didn't. He didn't know that was going to be quiet. He was just, they were just like, come on, keep going, keep going, yeah. keep singing. But I, I will was, say, I'd love to imagine that in the studio. And then my other favorite thing is to imagine uh, people singing uh, commercial jingles in the studio. Like, I'd like to imagine them with their headsets, like singing the AutoZone song <laughs> <laughs> very seriously. Because if you listen to it, like, oh, they're really rocking it. Yeah. And just like them getting into fights about how loud different microphones should be while they're singing about AutoZone makes me so happy. <laughs> One <laughs> of the kinds of commercials that I, are, I, are, this will be a thing where I choose to be mad about it, but I guess I could choose to find it funny, but is when there's a commercial where a lady's singing about insurance or whatever, but instead of just having her in the background, they have her on a stool with an acoustic guitar and she kind of looks like a hippie and she kind of looks like somebody you'd see at a coffee shop. And, but she's just going, like a good neighbor. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, are you trying to trick me into thinking this means something to her? Well, yeah, or I like to imagine being in the coffee shop. And you're like, what the fuck is this act? <laughs> it's just, it's two hours of jingles. <laughs> she knows we've heard these, right? What would be great is she, if she had introduced it as a cover, right? She says, this is a cover. <laughs> this is an original, but her originals are also jingles. Mr. Pib, Mr. Pib. And you're like, <laughs> so she wrote her own jingle that's not even on a thing? <laughs> oh, don't do the new stuff. <laughs> state farm state farm state farm state farm <laughs> uh, you guys know this one sing along if you know it <laughs> well now if i saw that in a coffee shop i gotta say i'd enjoy the whole show because that's ridiculous that would be great yeah, yeah well you'd have to wait around until it was over to talk to that person yeah and you go you gotta tell me. i have my own cd because they're jingles there's 40 songs on it <laughs> Please buy them because I'm really being sued. <laughs> I need a lot of money. I had this, uh, so I'll tell you a quick Billy Joel story while you think about the image behind me, but I bet you already got this one. I don't know. I didn't even think I know what it is, but I'm trying to place the... Oh, okay, cool. Tell you a break. funny thing, observation about Mr. Billy Joel that occurred to me. I was doing a little show with a comic we both know. I will not say this comic's name because then I'm... Oh. Yeah, but... Uh, this comic has a husband and uh, I happen to mention that I do this show with you and she goes oh my husband knows everything about Billy Joel and I'm and that's funny to me and I go oh your husband's a Billy Joel fan and she goes no he's not <laughs> he does not like him I'm like what, what? how do you He's got a very strong, strong opinion, and he knows lots of stuff about his songs. And I'm like, huh? What does? 
How did <laughs> that's not the first person I've heard of who's like that. And I find that a testament to Billy Joel's um, immersion in our collective culture that you can be a person who's like, hey, are you a Billy Joel fan? No. And then you go, why not? And they go, well, first of all, on this album, and they name seven songs. And, just, <laughs> and you know, that tour when he went to Moscow, I mean, come on. <laughs> and you're like, I, I didn't know a lot of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think if there's anybody I don't like that I know a lot about musically. Right. I guess like maybe, I guess if you had like a, a brother or sister who played the hell out of this music that you hated, you might be there. I know a lot about ACDC that I don't care about. Right. <laughs> sister hated life. I know a lot about the Spice Girls. I'll admit that. I do know a lot about the Spice Girls. And the truth is I'm aware they're not the greatest band, but I still like them. That's why I know the stuff. Oh, that's different. I, yeah. I can't think of something where I know a bunch and I'm like, oh, I just really want to really dive into this thing that makes me unhappy. <laughs> I hate Billy Joel, especially side two of Turnstiles. <laughs> Sometimes I'll just put that on and remind myself. Now sing along real bad. <laughs> I'll tell you what, the five or six times I've seen him in concert were awful. <laughs> I'm only going back three more times. <laughs> Fuck this. Yeah. As I had him sign this, I had him sign this. Not to me. I didn't have him say my name. <laughs> That's a great bit. Have him autograph your arm to somebody else and then tattoo it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to uh, tell you about that because I found that so funny, but I honestly thought, who else would, I think that could only be Billy Joel. For some, I have another yeah. friend who has a similar opinion, but I can tell the way he says it, that it's a bit. I mean, the whole joke about Billy Joel is if you say, do you like Billy Joel? Everyone says, well, I like the early stuff, which means you're aware of the later stuff. Yeah. You know all of it. Yeah. And you made your choice. I also saw nobody that. says only the last three albums. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be a great, interesting Billy Joel fan. A great bit. Only River of Dreams and Stormfront for me, bud. Yeah. <laughs> all, that, all that other crap, yeah. Keep your pressure in your Allentown. <laughs> oh, snap, that is funny. Yeah, um, it just seems so Billy Joel to me that she's just about the only person who I can imagine somebody expressing that opinion about. Yeah. I mean, it I've met... It really makes it impossible to like him only. Yeah. You have to like him, but... Although I, some of these people on this message board, there's this one guy who had the temerity to say, this is all he said. I kind of wish Billy Joel would make some more new music. Yeah. And the pylon was so hilarious. <laughs> it was a lot like, he doesn't need to make another album for you, which is not what he was saying. Which is not what anybody does. <laughs> oh, he got a great but can't he just enjoy what he's done <laughs> this is a message board he's not yelling at billy joel that is such proof that nobody knows what they want <laughs> like i like billy joel i wish he'd make a new album no 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 <laughs> you were right the first time you like billy joel that's it yeah. billy joel is a set that exists in nature <laughs> you don't want more I love Paul McCartney. I don't want his new album. You stop now. Yep. There's plenty. There's plenty. Oh my God. So there's two cents behind you. That's right. Is it your two cents? It's my two cents. Oh, wait. Why did I leave it alone? Because you went out with a line you couldn't see. It was time to come home. Big Shot. It's from Big Shot. <laughs> Again. Yeah. Ah, oh, you! I almost couldn't find it. There's uh, nobody going to stick your two cents in. Yeah. If you now want to leave it alone. Leave it alone. Ah. <laughs> uh, oh God, that was close. I uh, 
I should have talked at you more while you were trying to figure it out. <laughs> that would have helped or hurt. Um, are you close? Do you, do you, there are pennies. Are you close? Just nonsense. Two pennies. Two, the two one cent coins. American dollars. Abraham Lincoln. Throw oh, it. time's up. <laughs> Um, here's my dumb trivia question. It's not a great one. Okay. Um, you have frozen, first of all. Oh, there you are. Okay. Um, month and year. When did Billy Joel begin his residency at Madison Square Garden? Oh. I, it only popped out to me because it was one month before uh, Late Night with Seth Meyers began. Oh. Yeah. I didn't realize it had been going on longer than our show. <laughs> and that's a good hint because I then I was definitely going to get this wrong. Um, 2012? 14. 14, okay. January of 14. Oh, wow. That is that's a long a, run. It was a long run. Uh, even with the pandemic, it's well over 100 shows. Yeah. And I've seen six or seven, and we're going to one. We're both double vaxxed now. Yeah. So uh, I don't know when he's going to kick it off again, but we're going. Dude, I'm so excited about this idea. I just, ah, oh, fuck yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's going to be great. I want that to be the first concert I see live, you know, real concert. I'll see plenty of stand up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. As just I avoid it. Yeah, as I say, with I've seen a lot of stand up, so yes, I suffer from low level depression. Um, that's, that's a joke. Um, um, I, uh, I I picked out a song that I I'm like I'm like can't believe that we haven't talked about it yet, considering how much I clearly adore it. So we'll just talk about Big Shot. <laughs> yeah, I think it's time. Yeah, I fucking love Big Shot. I think it's it a great, great song. It is really great. In a bit that I sometimes do about Billy Joel, which you may have seen, Big Shot is my reference for what I'm talking about, which is I talk about how much I love Billy Joel and I say, Billy Joel's amazing, but he don't rock, I say. Even when he's trying to sound like he rocks, he sounds like a guy who's trying to sound like he's rocking. And then I go, like in that song, Big Shot, there's this thing where he goes, and you're like oh you're trying to rock that's pretty cute <laughs> <laughs> it's so true god bless yeah big oh, shot I'm excited yay i mentioned again mentioned billy joel in the context of a bunch of comics and one comic went she goes my favorite thing about billy joel is all the motorcycles in his songs <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> I don't know how many there are, but there's more than one. There's probably more than one. There's definitely moving out. What else yeah. is there? Oh, we'll have to research for next time. Yeah. A cliffhanger. Yeah. Hey, and if you know the answer, hey, keep it to yourself. We'll figure it out. Yeah, stay out of the comments. Come on, you guys. Unless it's, uh, um, who's our big fan? Um, oh, uh, 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 Bruno. Bruno Mars. Yeah. If you yeah, know yeah. the answer, Bruno, you go ahead and say it. Yeah, use their special font. Yeah. <laughs> and But if you know the answer, Bruno, as in Bruce Willis, you keep it to yourself. Yeah, they don't want to hear from you, Bruce. Yeah. All right, we'll talk to you next week, everybody. Perfect.